you're going to either hate this video or absolutely love it. Uh, the reason you might not like it is I'm testing out for the very first time my brand new vlogging camera, the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II. But what I didn't know when I shot this entire day's video was that there was wind noise, terrible, terrible wind noise, and I'm purchasing those little furry things to put over the microphone so it won't happen again. But anyway, this is a fabulous episode, lots of interesting things, but terrible wind noise, and I apologize for that, but it's pretty darn funny. I think you'll enjoy this video if you sit through it and just don't tolerate the noise. Good morning, I'm in Austin, Texas today. I'm at Stan's house for a few days, gathering up my things, need to register my vehicle, and today is the very first day of using my new camera that I just purchased. I'll link the unboxing of that. I have a new PowerShot, Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II. And I've been wanting this camera for quite a while to do my vlogging, and for the last over 200 episodes, I've been vlogging with this little guy. This here is a um, GoPro Hero Session 4. As you probably have noticed in the last 200 videos, there is no video stabilization, so the image is bouncing around a lot on the screen. So this uh, camera does not do very well at night. What it does do well is that it's waterproof, which is what GoPros are known for. It has a very wide angle lens which distorts things a little bit, so hopefully the image will be better on the new camera. And the audio is not super great on this particular camera. So the new camera should give a, an increase in all of those areas, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. Things may look a little wacky uh, for the first couple of episodes while I figure out how to get my head framed into the uh, screen because, of course, this is a much narrower camera versus the wide angle on this. And this I was always shooting just guessing where it was. So sometimes when I'd point down at something or be talking about something, it would be just off the screen because I wouldn't know. I'd just be sort of pointing this in the general direction. This particular new camera has a flip-up screen so that I'm able to see a little bit better what I'm looking at and hopefully be able to capture everything in screen. Today's going to be a super busy day. I'm going to go try to get my vehicle inspected, like a safety inspection. I don't have to do emissions in Texas. Uh, Texas requires emissions for gasoline vehicles or diesels newer than like 2010, 2011. So I predate that, so I don't have to do that inspection. But I do have the safety inspection, and then I need to go get my vehicle registered with the Department of Motor Vehicles. So they're doing the safety inspection, and everything looks good so far. He's got to take it for a short spin. My step van has failed the safety inspection, so uh, not a big deal. It's a really easy fix. As you notice, I have these cab lights on top, and sometime in the last couple of days, that center lens that goes over the top cab light has popped off, maybe in the wind or a vibration or something else. So I have to get that replaced. And then there are 10 little light bulbs that have gone out on the top lights in the back. Place 10 little bulbs up there to get these red lights going, and then I'm good to go. They said everything else looks great, it's just seven dollars. So I'm going to head to the parts store, see if I can get those parts, get that repaired, and then either come back here today or I don't know, maybe come back tomorrow. Cracks me up just a little bit when I go into the auto parts store and they ask me what kind of vehicle I have and what year to look me up in the computer. That's the very first thing they want to do. I just ask for a light bulb, a lens, anything, and they can never find me in their computer. This is O'Reilly's back here um, because it's not in the computer. Well, this is not exactly the correct lens, but I'm going to try it. And then I have some bulbs that hopefully are the correct bulbs. Try those too. I climbed up on top, tried this lens, this just does not fit, it's slightly more oval and not as square as the other lens, so I'm going to have to go find another auto parts store just to get this little plastic lens uh, in order to pass the safety inspection. So, Because I had good luck before getting one of those lenses at Napa Auto Parts, I'm going to try to find one here in Austin. I'm told it's quite a distance from here, but I'm just going to look on Google Maps and drive over there. I arrived at the Napa place, um, sort of parked 
slightly illegally. There's a picture of a box truck here, and I'm parked in front of the sign, but there's no real good parking in front of the Napa store, so I've got to wander in there and try to be as quick as I can so I can get out of the parking spot. All right, I think I have the correct lens. I just have to climb up on top of this thing and try to get it installed and see if I have the right part. Yesterday I made a telephone call and I believe I found the original owner of the step van and the way I did that was I looked at the side of this vehicle when it was raining and you can see a ghost image of the vinyl graphic that was on the sign and it's a company called Trans Chicago Trucking Group. Anyway, so I called over there and I explained what I was looking for and the original service manager that services all the vehicles was... Um, was still working there and he worked there in 1996 so he told me that he believes that this particular vehicle had a recall on it and that it was sent back to Cummins the diesel company to have this little repair done called the killer dowel pin it's this little pin that's right in by the timing chain and the gears in the front of the engine at least as I understand it I watched a video about this and this little pin will vibrate over time and 50-50 chance when it pops out the front, it will fall down and miss the gears and just drop in the oil pan. But 50% 50, 50 chance it will go right into the gears and destroy and annihilate the engine. So obviously, this is something that I want to make sure is done. And rather than spending $1,000 or $1,100 to open up the front of the engine just to check and see if there's this little tiny washer with a little tab on it that's been installed, I'm going to try to call and find out if this has been done. Long story short, I talked to this guy. He says he thinks that it was done under a recall and that Cummins did it and that their database of Cummins Diesel will have record of this recall being done. So now I'm going to open up the hood here and look for the engine serial number so that I can call over to Cummins and see if this was done or at least try to see. I'm not sure exactly what I am looking for. I think it's a serial number. I do see a code here that says C325Y. Uh, that might be the code that they're looking for. So I'm going to snap a picture of that and then call up Cummins and see if that is um, indeed the number that they're looking for. I called Cummins with the number that I found. They said that's not the engine serial number, that's just some other random number. So I still haven't found it. It's apparently a eight digit number and it's on some sort of little tag somewhere in the engine. They have no idea where. They can't tell me even where to start looking. Uh, so I haven't a clue, they don't have a clue. So I'm gonna look a little bit more. If I can't find it, then I'm just gonna have to wait for some comments from you guys. Well, some good news. I found it. It's on the side of the timing belt cover or timing chain cover. And I think that's what it's called. It's a set of bolts and I think this is the set of bolts and the plate that has to be removed to do the killer dowel pin repair. So anyway, I think this is it. I'm not sure which of these numbers is the right number. I'm just going to try to do a snapshot here with the camera and then go inside and do a close up and look at it. Yeah, 
It's right there. I just got off the phone with Cummins Diesel, the maker of the engine here in the step van. They told me that the serial number is accurate. Good news. They looked it up in the database. They gave me all the statistics and they said there are no claims against this, meaning that it they don't know if it's ever been done. It was not done through them if it was. So I have no clue whether the dowel pin has been repaired or not. The time has come. It's almost six o'clock. I've been waiting for the heat to go down. It's 93 degrees in Austin right now. Anyway, I'm out here. There's a little bit of a breeze and I'm in the shade, so it's not too bad at back here, but I'm gonna do some troubleshooting and try to figure out the wiring for these little cab lights. Well, to be honest, I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing here. I can't figure this out. I don't know what to do with the voltmeter. I watched Merrill try to explain it to me, my brother-in-law, probably four or five times. I know this is the cheapy. This is the free one that I got from Harbor Freight, uh, but I don't know how to use it. I understand the concept, but I just simply don't know how to use it. Obviously, I'm doing something wrong. Obviously, it's something that's super simple for those of you who have done this a million times and maybe it takes three or four more times of somebody showing me which switch to flip and how to set this thing up and where to put these little probes so that it works and then I'm able to test it. But I'm sort of stuck and so at this point I've either got to get somebody to help me and come out here and show me how to do this or I'm gonna to have to take this to a mechanic just to get these little lights fixed so that I can pass the inspection so I can leave Austin. So who knows what that's going to cost for an electrician at a mechanic shop to do this. So these are the kinds of frustrations that I have as a newbie, as a beginner for doing my own mechanical electronics type work. So anyway, that's what I'm working on. I might be making a little bit of progress. Part of the difficulty here is getting this camera mounted so you can see what I'm working on up here and still get in the shot because I just don't have all the fancy rigging equipment or anything like that. I've got this camera just sort of hanging off of the back door here, one of these doors like over here. So what I did was I put black contact on the frame and the white up here, the red onto the, the, red onto the white and it's showing 9.2, 9.3. So I think they're getting some voltage here into this first light. And I think these are hooked in a series like uh, Christmas lights or something like that. So it's, it's a little bit of progress, but this is highly comical to me because I'm just so out of my depth here and just sort of floundering, spinning my wheels a lot and making just tiny little itty bitty baby steps with this like so many other things in the step band project. Uh, it's, it's quite the challenge for me and I'm sure uh, half of you are, that are watching this are just like screaming like move it over to the left or switch this little setting over here or this way or click that contact there and it's just I don't know what I'm doing nobody's here to help me I'm just trying to figure it out I consider this like spooky electronics I just don't get it I was monkeying around with these little screws uh, here and here that penetrate through the frame to the back side and all I did was spin them and now I have four more lights going it's just the center one that's not going and I don't see another contact there in the center to play with well actually whoops i see one now maybe i just have to fiddle with that and uh get the center one going i'm making some very strange progress here watch this i was fiddling around with this and this light bulb if you move it just right it starts to light up so it's like a loose connection and now i'm playing with this one try and get it to go on so I think I have power coming into this connection here but just a real bad connection there I have to get some of that product you guys talked about for connections for cleaning them up all right I don't believe it I simply am blown away um, I'm just so just so surprised here that I did this I got 
all of the lights, all 10 of them working. Uh, replaced all 10 bulbs just so that was eliminated. And then it looks like it was the backside bolts here that connect through the body skin uh, were sort of rusty. And just by twisting those back and forth allowed them to get good contact. So I think I need to go get some of that electronic grease that you guys talk about and pull these bolts off and maybe replace the rusted, I mean pull the nuts off and replace the rusted nuts with some good nylock and put that grease stuff in there and I think that'll eliminate this. Anyway, that's a thumbs up. Successful project for the day. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode. Far away.